And I will be labeling this as a very, and I mean a very odd situation, because you rarely, if ever, see this happen with number one overall picks in the NFL draft, especially quarterbacks. Oh, man. I understand it, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. Oh, <laughs> man, oh, man, do we have some interesting stuff to take a look at here on your Friday evening. By the way, hope all you had a great Friday. Hope all of you have a great weekend. But we got to talk about what's going on in Carolina with no other than the man, the myth, the legend himself, Bryce Young. And oh yeah, by the way, I need to address this. In the previous video a couple days ago when we talked about what's going on with CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans, I stated in that video that the Carolina Panthers and the Texans, they were two of the worst teams in the league. And Trap Blogger said this on that video. Carolina was one win away from a playoff spot and had a quarterback carousel the entire season. They traded up to get the number one spot and quarterback they needed. So how are they one of the two worst teams in the league to go to? Shouldn't that be for the other eight teams that had worse records than the Panthers? And I agree 100% where you're coming from. And I want to be 100% transparent with all of you. When I said that the Panthers and Texans were two of the worst teams in the league, I low-key forgot the Panthers went 7-10 and 10 last year. I don't know why, it just felt like they did worse. But in reality, they weren't too bad. And me calling them one of the worst teams in the NFL, maybe that was pushing it a tad bit too far. So I do apologize, that's my fault. Anyways, getting back on track here, we gotta talk about this odd, and I mean this very, very, very odd situation that is currently unfolding between Bryce Young and the Panthers. You don't see this happen every day. As a matter of fact, let me change that statement. You rarely see this happen at all. And you especially don't see this happen with the number one overall pick in the draft. We're going to talk all about that in today's video, but also we got to talk about what Jackson Smith and Ajibia stated. He said, quote unquote, he's going to dominate the NFL. What do you think about that? That's some ballsy words. He didn't just say he's going to do good in the NFL. He said he's going to dominate. I'm going to show you what's going on there, but also we got a couple other minor topics, including, and maybe they're not so minor, Lamar Jackson and Stetson Bennett. I think it's safe to say we got a jam-packed video. Get your snack, get your popcorn, get you your favorite meal you like to eat when you watch a video, because trust me, I do the same thing. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. If you like the content, consider subscribing. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Should have crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get on. Okay, where do y'all want to start? We got four topics to go over. Man, this really is going to be a jam-packed video. You know what? Let's get the, I'd say, the least important one, the minor one out the way first, and that's Stetson Doordash Bennett. Let's try to make this short and sweet. So we all know Stetson Doordash Bennett, back-to-back -back champion at Georgia. Is he 29 years old? Yes, he's old as dirt, but he was a good quarterback last year. You got to give him his flowers and respect and yada, yada, yada. Long story short, he gets drafted by the Los Angeles Rams, and even I myself, I tweeted out, hey, this is low-key a great pick. Why is it a great pick? Well, number one, Matt Stafford, he's getting old, and number two, he's going to be battling some injuries here and there, and I think Stetson Bennett could be a reliable backup. Will he ever be a starter in the NFL? I don't know about all that. I gotta see how he does. But for right now, I have no problem whatsoever labeling him as a good backup. With that being said, reportedly, news just came out that the Rams quarterback coach and Mike LaFleur, the Rams offensive coordinator, quote unquote, really targeted it, states a minute early on from the draft process. It was also stated that Sean McVay was extremely impressed by his athleticism and his natural stroke. Yeah, you, uh, you see that and uh, heard me correctly. <laughs> is natural stroke do what you want with that information and also last but not least if you're a georgia fan this is going to be music to your ears mave said that bennett was a quote-unquote easier evaluation since he came from georgia and yep i would agree with that evaluating georgia players are pretty simple they're really good if you are starting at georgia more than likely your nfl material plain and simple so i agree with sean mcveigh coming from that standpoint now as far as it goes for all this information that just came out what do y'all think about it? We're not talking about the college level anymore, guys. We're talking about the NFL. If you are an NFL team, would you have really went after Stetson Bennett? Seriously. Sure, he can look good against college kids, but can he look good against NFL monsters and pros? I would love to talk about that some more, but we gotta get a move on to our second topic of this video, and that is no other than Lamar Jackson. First things first, I do want to give some kudos, respect, and congratulations to Lamar Jackson for inking that insane contract. Congrats, man. That's awesome. Big pickup for the Ravens. I think Ravens fans, you're happy. The team's happy. It's a win-win. Lamar got his money. The team got their quarterback and the fans. Well, you got Lamar. I know what some of you are probably sitting here thinking, Matt, what are we talking about Lamar for? There's nothing controversial going on. He got his contract. What's going on? Well, my friend, we have a interesting statement that he said in a recent interview where he stated he wants to throw for 6,000 yards next season. He also added, we've got the guys to do it. I saw this interview, and I'm not going to lie, I didn't watch all of it, but I watched a couple minutes of it where he said that, and I was like, whoa, 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 wait, hold on. Did I 
Hear that correctly? <laughs> 6,000? My man, you need to worry about throwing 5,000 first. Gosh, man, 6,000 yards? That's what I like to call being delusional. And here's my problem with this statement. Let's say last year or the year before, he threw for 4,900 yards, got close to 5,000, and he said, hey, I wanna go for 6,000 this year. I wouldn't think that's crazy. But what I think is crazy is when you haven't even sniffed 5,000 and you're just skipping that milestone and saying, yep, I wanna throw for 6K. Like, what is this dude on? He thinks he's Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. This dude ain't throwing for no 6K. As a matter of fact, I'd bet everything I own he ain't throwing for 5K. I don't have anything more to say about that. Just wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'll leave it at that. And oh yeah, I got some bad news and good news. The bad news is, I'll give it to you first, we're not going to talk about JSN, that situation right now. But the good news is, we're going to talk about that in tonight's video because I also remember we got to talk about something else going on with CJ Stroud. So I figured we'd put that in together to Ohio State players. Let's get into the Bryce Young topic. But now finally, getting a move on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to talk about good old Brycey Bryce Young. Woo, the man of the hour. And weirdly enough, ever since he's got drafted, we haven't talked about him. I know, right? Kind of strange. I mean, he's number one overall pick in the draft. You figure there'd be some news coming out or we'd speak on him, but we just haven't. And that goes to his character. He doesn't want a lot of attention, which I love about him. He's one of the humblest people and guys you'll ever meet. And if I'm a Panthers fan, I am so excited for the season. This guy, he's must-see TV. He's special. He's an NFL GM's dream because the GM doesn't have to worry about, okay, is he going to be prepared? Okay, is he going to be doing off the field stuff? Is he going to be causing problems? No, you don't got to worry about him. The only part of him that was concerning and it's laughable is, oh, he's only five foot 11. He's only six foot. That's it. And he can't control that. And I've never understood those concerns with his game because he dominated the SEC. And yes, that's right. I said dominated. He did. He hung up 41 on one of, if not the best defenses of all time in Georgia with just Jamison Williams. So yes, he did dominate. That's besides the point. We're here to talk about what's going on with the Panthers. And I will be labeling this as a very, and I mean a very odd situation, because you rarely, if ever, see this happen with number one overall picks in the NFL draft, especially quarterbacks. What's weird though, what's odd? Well, number one, and I can't believe nobody's talked about this, the Panthers weren't that trash last year. They weren't very good. It's hard to even say they were decent, but they weren't trash. Like we talked about in the intro, the Panthers, they went seven and 10 last year, not terrible. But here's what you also gotta understand. Yeah, they went seven and 10, but they also played in one of, if not the worst division in all of the league. It was straight up trash, and I'm not gonna go through here and dissect every single game. The point is, long story short, they went seven and 10. But, and I have a big but, they got some decent pieces on that team. You take a look at the wide receiver core, they got Adam Thielen. Yeah, he's pretty good. You got DJ Chart. He's pretty good. And then in the draft, you got a guy who I was really high on and Jonathan Mingo from Ole Miss. All in all, the wide receiver core, and they also got Terrence Marshall, not too bad. And you could argue and say it's pretty dang good. And oh yeah, can't forget to mention and throw this in there. Got a pretty decent tight end in Hayden Hurst and also Miles Sanders at running back. The running back position doesn't really matter. It's the most expendable position in the league. But my point is, at tight end, wide receiver, offense as a unit, Bryce Young, he's got a decent ball club. Here's the biggest wild card for me, the offensive line. I'm not too sure what to expect. And the reason I say that's the biggest wild card is because if you can't give Bryce Young, just give him four or five seconds, it's not going to be pretty and it's not going to be a good season. If you don't block, it doesn't matter who you got at wide receiver, tight end, etc. Doesn't matter. But with all that being said, if you break it down, Bryce Young is in a great situation to be the number one overall draft pick. What I mean by that? Well, more times than not, when a guy gets selected number one overall, they're going to a team that is complete terrible and a terrible organization. My point is, Bryce Young got extremely blessed by not going to the Texans. I mean, look at CJ Stroud. He's in one of the worst positions of all time. That team in the Houston Texans, they flat out suck. The Panthers don't flat out suck. They're not great, but they don't suck. For example, if one of y'all wanted to argue to me and say, hey, I think Bryce Young can turn the Panthers into a playoff team? I could see where you're coming from, but if you were to say that about CJ Stroud, no, 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 no. I, I just couldn't have a conversation with you. I couldn't. So to me at least, that is what is extremely odd about the situation. Bryce Young can win immediately. Not many number one overall picks could ever say that. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not just that that makes all this odd. We got some news that came out earlier today. And you wanna know what that news is? Bryce Young isn't the starting quarterback. Yes, that's right, you heard me correctly. Bryce Young, number one pick in the draft, generational talent, 
is not going to be starting. At least, that is for now. According to the GM, heading into the season, their starter is Andy freaking Dalton. Oh, man. I understand it, but it doesn't mean I have to like it. Look, I get it. You want him to take his time. You don't want, and I'm talking about Bryce Young, you don't want him to rush in at things, but come on, man. He's the number one overall pick in the draft. Can we just skip this step in the story? I hate this. And I'm getting deja vu. You know what this reminds me of now that I think about it? Andy Dalton and Justin Fields situation with the Bears. What was the benefit of starting Andy Dalton for the Bears when in reality, everybody in Andy Dalton knew that Justin Fields eventually was going to take over? Zero benefit. You're just taking away from Justin Fields' growth. And it's the same thing here. Will Andy Dalton start week one? I don't think so. But just labeling him the starter right now, why? Let's skip this part in the story. Andy Dalton is 47 years old. There is no reason he should be starting over Bryce Young. None. And I know some people are going to say, well, Matt, quit freaking out. And, you know, it's just for the offseason stuff. No, right now, let me ask you a question. Matter of fact, let me ask you a question for the people backing this. If you are backing this, if you had to choose right now who you want to start for your team week one, are you choosing 47-year-old Andy Dalton or Bryce Young? Let me know. If your answer to that question is Bryce Young, then you should be in the same ballpark as me. Why are we doing this BS with Andy Dalton? Why? Before I freak out and go on a complete tangent, let me read you off what they said. We don't have a timeline. We're not saying, hey, this guy's going to start the first game or we're not going to play him at all this year. When the time is right or we felt like he's got enough of a mastery, uh, that's a weird word, mastery of the offense where he can go out there and operate and be successful, that's when he'll be out there referring to Bryce Young. Hmm. Okay, continuing along here, if Andy's the guy to start the season and he's a starter right now heading into the season, then he'll be the guy. When Bryce is ready or Matt Crow is ready, whoever it may be, that'll be the time they go in. I hate it. I really do. Let me give you a better example and a better perspective of what this is like. This is like you work in your entire life, your entire life, 20, 30 years to get a Lamborghini. It's your dream car. You've been working hard every single day so you can get it. You buy the Lamborghini, but you also have a Honda Civic in your garage. You get your Lamborghini home. It's so pretty, like everything you dreamed of. It's nice, polished, your favorite paint, etc. You put it in your garage right next to your Honda Civic, and you're like, man, this car is amazing, but I think I'm going to keep driving the Honda Civic. I don't want to, you know, rush into things. I don't want to get in a wreck with the Lamborghini. I'm going to keep driving my Honda Civic. I'm going to wait till the right time to drive my Lamborghini. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it may be risky to drive the Lamborghini. You may get some paint chips on it. You may get in a wreck, but you worked hard for it. Drive it. What's the point of having something nice if you're not going to use it? Same thing with Bryce Young. You shouldn't have to wait a couple months to say for sure you want to drive that Lambo. No, you paid for it. Drive it right away. Same thing with Bryce Young. You're paying Bryce Young $35 million. Let's go get this baby going. Put this thing on the road and let's unleash it. Nobody wants to see Honda Civic, aka, in this case and scenario, Andy Dalton out there. Nobody. He's pushing 50. Why put him out there? Not only is this dumb, at least in my humble opinion, it's stupid because now... It may mess with Bryce's mental space. You never know because I felt like it messed with Justin Fields' mental space up with the Bears. Because when you're a top pick in the draft and your team that drafted you, they're not even saying you're the starting quarterback. Yeah, it does mess with you mentally. You start to look at it like, dang, do they even want me here? I mean, am I good? And it just keeps going on and on and on. It's a mental game. Granted, with all this being said, am I overreacting a little bit? Yeah, probably. Bryce Young's got a 99.8% chance of starting week one. I'm just upset over the fact we're doing this BS. Carolina already has good pieces around him. Let's get this show on the road. I'm going to end it off here before I continue to go on a rampage. Let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, roll a mini.